25 percent of of what happened last year on the positive side i'm talking on jobs and all sorts of things was really the, the federal government you know and spending systems and there's a lot of physical stuff um if they were to come back and do that this year then you'd sort of have a remake of that and things would happen typically they do loosen up spend a lot of money during election years uh the party in power whether they are able to do that this year i don't know they certainly did it last year but you have to remember when you have 34 trillion in debt and you know that we're going to have at least a two trillion dollar deficit it's really hard to, to run in and say, OK, I'm going to spend a whole lot more money now. January 2024 settled in with upbeat consumer sentiment, inflation at 3.4 percent and a growing equity market. Previous economic projections had expected the U.S. to grow by 2.0 percent in 2023, with the Federal Reserve projecting the highest figure at 2.6 percent, outpacing economic performance in Europe. Ted Oakley. The managing partner and founder of Oxbow Advisors suggests that positive outcomes may be repeated if a similar approach is adopted this year. However, he also urges caution, emphasizing that initiating it's a significant bull market in stocks is uncommon given the current valuation levels. Stocks are heading into the final week of February on a high note after the significant indexes achieved new milestones on Friday and registered winning weeks with help from NVIDIA's blockbuster earnings. The Dow and S&P 500 closed Friday at record levels and were set to remain near their peaks on Monday. Futures tied to the Dow Jones Industrial Average were down by 0.11%, while S&P 500 futures and NASDAQ 100 futures ticked lower by about 0.2% each. Oakley points out that the market can be misleading, with top-performing stocks repeatedly hitting high levels, giving a false impression of overall market strength. The most significant challenge to markets in the week ahead will likely come from Thursday's latest reading of the Personal Consumption Expenditures, PCE Index, the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge. A look at consumer confidence and updates on the manufacturing sector will also be in focus during the week. The last time an inflation report came out before the opening bell, a hotter-than-expected consumer price index, CPI report, rattled markets and sparked a stock sell-off. Oakley advises individual investors who have heavily invested in stocks to consider reducing their exposure, not necessarily selling out entirely, but taking a cautious approach. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. We put out early January that we thought the market would make a new high in the first quarter because you get this close and typically they'll push it into new highs. But we do think in general, it's probably a, a topping process. Uh, things are really expensive. You know, we're about 21 times on the S&P right now as far as earnings multiple. And you just, you normally don't start with a big bull market from that level. So I'm not saying you have to have a sell-off. I mean, if maybe if you had a tremendous amount of money come in from the physical side or something like that, it would change. But the way it stands right now it looks as though we're pretty fully priced right now. You take the leading stocks and some of those start to fall back. They're not as strong as they were of the very, very leading stocks. But it looks like they are because the, the ones that are leading keep on making these <clears throat> exorbitant new highs and that pushes the markets up. And it looks like to the outsider that the S&P and the Dow have hit a new high. So things must be OK. But if you look at the Dow Jones, they, they mean, I'm sorry, the Dow Jones transportation average, the Dow Jones utility average, see, they're not in new highs. And they're definitely important to the, to the economy. And then also the NASDAQ, not the NASDAQ 100, but the NASDAQ has not hit a new high either. So it's a camouflage market and it always happens at the high. And then you get to a high point and then you start this volatility. You'll have these days that are you know, up 2%, down 2%, up 2%, down, but you don't make any big headway. And then one of these times after volatility picks up, you'll see come in and all of a sudden we make some lower lows. And then all of a sudden it starts to implode on you a bit. And I, I my guess it would be something like that. The only thing that would keep that is if, if you were to have, again, some big physical intervention from the government that pushed a lot of money back in, and rates came down and there'd be a lot of mistakes there, but it, it would certainly juice the market. I just don't think that'll happen this time around. If you look at 21 times forward earnings right now, 
you just don't start new bull markets there. I can show you a lot of these markets. And I think people have been fooled to an extent because if I bought the S&P 500 in the last week of December 2021, and I measured it today, which is a new high, just barely a few points, then I still made more money on the six month treasury or three month treasury than I did in the market. And I just think people don't remember that. They don't, they don't really think like that. They think, oh my gosh, the markets have been hot as a pistol the last four months. That's true. But over a time, you know, a time span, a cycle, you haven't made any money really. If you're highly invested in stocks today and you're probably in the indexes or in some exchange traded funds, I would encourage you, you don't have to sell out of the market, but I would encourage you to take some of that off. Okay. And just ice it down because you can get, like I say, on a 90 day treasure, you can get five and a quarter. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and that may, that may be the best thing you can earn the next six or nine months, but try to keep your head on straight and realize that at times in the market, you need to be, have more money in it. And at times you need to have less. Um, and you just look at Warren Buffett. He's, they haven't been buying much at all. In fact, they sold some of their Apple and uh, they've got a hoard of cash right now. Uh, take it from the best. They're not out there buying tons of things right now. While investors have pushed back bets on a rate cut as soon as March and lowered expectations for the number of rate cuts this year, traders still forecast that the Fed will reduce borrowing costs from their generational peak in the coming months. Regarding recent economic indicators, Oakley mentions that January's consumer price index and producer price index exceeded expectations. He speculates that the Federal Reserve might refrain from adjusting if these trends persist into March. Markets are now pricing in three interest rate cuts for 2024, which aligns with the Fed's most recent forecast and down from a former consensus of six cuts seen back in December, per Bloomberg data. Among those pushing back projections for cuts is Goldman Sachs, the firm said Thursday that it now sees four cuts this year instead of its previous forecast of five. It expects the first interest rate cut to come in June. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. Uh, I mean, if you look at the last 25 years, they're one of the part and parcel reason we're in this fix we're in today is the Fed. Uh, they left their knitting, which was not to necessarily make sure the stock market didn't go down. That was never one of the things was you know, assigned to them, but they took it on in the last 25 years. And unfortunately it's called, it will cause eventually a lot of pain. I think, I don't think they can do a lot right here. You know, these numbers that just came out for January for CPI and PC were higher than everybody expected. Uh, and if you look, that means they probably can't do anything in March or right on March. If you have another month like that, then it probably can't do anything in May. And then you get into the summertime. I'll have to say I have no idea, but it my guess just a guess is, is that if you if the numbers stay strong in February and then in March, that they may not lower it all this year because they probably couldn't. But uh gosh, it's uh, you know, anybody that is thinking that they're gonna do this or that, I don't know where they get it because we certainly don't know. We just have to we know what we know. Like I know what I can get in a one year treasury and a six year, six month treasury. I know what I can get, guaranteed. OK, but I don't know what the Fed's going to do. I mean, if you think about it right now, OK, you have low, low unemployment. I mean, like three point two. Well, if you come in and lower rates all of a sudden and right now wages are up five and a half, six percent for the year, you, you won't be able to hire anybody. Everybody <laughs> wages will go up 10 percent. You know, they'll just just sort of reduce the thing again. And I think that's the problem you have. They're sort of they're the between a rock and a hard place, I think right now. And I could tell you what I think, but I'd probably be wrong. I could only, the way we have to do things is we manage for the next three to six months because we like to buy what we can see now, see what we can, what we know will work, okay? I, I know what I can make on a one-year treasury, right? Now. I know what I, I, I can make a certain amount of money, say 5%. I know I can make that. Now, I, whether, the economy turns and goes one way or another in a year. I don't know. If I had to guess, uh, sometime after the election, maybe it may take it long that long, but somewhere along the way, and, and you you have a, a bit of a weaker economy. I just I just see that in the cards. But if you don't get that, uh, for us, that's okay, because we're still just going to be 
buying what we buy and looking at value the way we look at it and not try to get caught up in guessing a macro move. Because when you get in and start investing like that, you're missing the point. It would be like buying a piece of real estate and wondering in, uh, in Texas and wondering what's going on in North Dakota. What difference does it make? <laughs> you see? And it's that sort of thing. And you have to look at investing that way. You have to buy what you know at the time and try to get away from uh, you know, what's going to happen in the economy because it's going to come and go. And I won't be surprised. I'd give it a 50 50 chance that we have you know, at least one or two quarters that are slower. The global economy was more resilient than anticipated in 2023, but there were patchy bright spots. 2024 brings further ambiguity. The January 2024 World Economic Outlook update from the International Monetary Fund, IMF, describes the global economy as surprisingly resilient in a modest upgrade to its October projections. Growth is projected at 3.1% in 2024 and 3.2% in 2025. What is your stance? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.